Bap, we were supposed to get the Coalition's policy on nuclear power before the budget. Seemingly it's been delayed. There are big questions about where they would go. Also questions about whether or not the Coalition will stick to the Paris Climate Agreement because that target by Australia has been increased under Labor. I spoke to the Shadow Climate Change and Energy Minister Ted O'Brien a short time ago. Tom, our plan remains the same as it has been now for some time. We are looking at all possible advanced nuclear technologies, micro-reactors, small modular reactors, and also next generation large ones. And we'll be announcing in due course what the policy is. Um, I really want to make the point, of course, that as I've said to you before indeed, uh, we are looking at an all of the above approach because you need a balanced mm. mix of different technologies. So we need renewables, we need gas, and as coal retires from the system, we believe we should be introducing zero emissions nuclear okay. energy. It's you, the mix that really counts. Sure, sure. And no, I understand it's not just that, but this is the aspect that was new recently from Peter Dutton. Are you saying that you're not necessarily going to announce large scale nuclear reactors? They're on the table, but not necessarily part of the policy? Uh, nothing's changed in that regard, Tom. Indeed, we are looking at micro, small and large. Um, ultimately, you've got to do your homework. Um, if we're drawing the line on something, I have to say, it is that we are only interested in Generation 3 technology and beyond. Um, because it's Generation 3 that provides for not just the economic efficiency of operation, but also the passive safety features. Okay. Um, that's, that's the extent to which we've publicly put any parameters around what we're looking at. No one wants the old technologies, but we mm. are interested in the advanced technologies. Look at micro, small and large. And how are you going to decide where whatever these technologies are are going to be placed? Because you open it up to too many maybe MPs, colleagues or communities, you do risk nimbyism. How will the locations be decided? Yeah, it's a good point about the nimbyism. Something I've learnt uh, looking overseas at best practice is the importance, whether it be gas, coal, nuclear, um, large wind farms, the importance of community acceptance and engagement. So social licence is indeed key, Tom. Mm. In terms of then um, other aspects when you are looking at locations, there are technical components and there are socio-economic components. Okay. We've been very clear that we are looking at a coal to nuclear strategy. Yeah. So we are looking at on and or near um, okay. existing or retired coal plants. Now that brings into the, the technical aspects, right? You can use existing transmission lines, for example. On the socio-economic side, a lot of these communities have high energy IQ. They get it. Um, and so, but starting again with social okay. licence. So, we need to make yeah. sure we're engaging them in the conversation. And, and how do you do that? How does a local community not approve of it perhaps? And if that's the case, would you not base it there? How do you do that? Is it going to be sort of a, an independent study carried out? Will people vote on it? How will you gauge that? Tom, again, um, and I don't want to be evasive here, but we'll release that when we do release mm. our policy. But will the community um, get a but, right to veto, but, I guess, but, in, but, in a simple but, sense, but, however that happens? But what I can assure you is as you look at, especially other like um, peer democratic nations, if you look at how they are rolling out major infrastructure, it mm. is vitally important that um, those host communities have a say. And we've been very upfront about our concerns with the Albanese government just steamrolling over regional communities, not listening, not engaging, um, ruining environmental yes, so, lands, so on biodiversity that point, lands. I mean, how do you do it differently? When you say engaging, does that mean a community would effectively get a veto right in some way? Well, how the Albanese government should do it differently, because, again, I'm not announcing our policy today, but the Albanese government, they know mm. that 92% of people their own government uh, assessment has concluded are not satisfied with the community engagement. If, if you look at the Hunter Offshore Wind uh, project alone, that zone, that community has been completely um, shown disrespect by this government. It's okay. a complete disgrace. Um, we don't agree with that. 
They mm. haven't listened. Um, the minister knew there was a problem with that offshore wind zone community engagement process and declared it anyway. I mean, we've been pretty upfront with that. There are bad practices in this country, and the right. prime culprit, culprit here is actually the Albanese government. But I'm just trying to understand, because you say better engagement, but would that extend to, in some way, I'm not asking how, I understand you won't tell me that, but in some way, if a community doesn't want it, they won't get it. Again, we'll be releasing our policy in due course, Tom. Okay. Um, but if, if you look at the very poor community engagement practices of the Albanese Labor government, um, we are looking at doing the polar opposite All right. of what they we'll, are. We'll they are what, disrespecting communities. We'll, we'll see what that might result in. Um, the Paris Agreement, Australia's commitment is now officially 43% reduction by 2030. That agreement can't be watered down under the terms. So if the coalition wins power... Will it stay in the Paris Agreement with a 43% commitment? Well, we haven't drawn any conclusions yet as a party room. Let, let me make clear my own instinct here, Tom. Um, the 43% target that the Albanese Labor government set was plucked out of thin air. We have been asking them from the get-go, show us the economic modelling that says this is achievable. To date, they have not had the Treasury, Department or even the Productivity Commission do modelling that says this is how we're going to get there, this is the impact. What is mm. going to be the impact on the Australian consumer, which is now paying among the highest energy prices in the world? What's okay. going to be the impact on regional communities? This is not a sort of a hypothetical academic thing. This is the government of the day. It set a mm. target. It hasn't done its homework. Well they should release any information they have and answer the questions for the target they themselves have already okay, set. OK, but, but indeed, it's not academic either. This is the commitment we are in as a country. Are you considering pulling out effectively if you are not satisfied with the, answer, or the questions you answered there on impact? We are committed to the Paris Agreement and we've made it very clear that mm. we will have a pathway to reach net zero by 2030. But I'm asking about 2030, 43%. That's also part of it. I'm asking, are you that. committed to that? I understand that, Tom, but just if I can finish my point. Sure. We've made it very clear that Australia will be a very different place come 2050, mm. depending on the pathway we take to decarbonise. And all eggs in one basket, renewables only approach, is going to lead to energy okay. poverty and the lights out. We believe in a balanced mix of technologies. Okay. Now, so, as, for, as for 2030, mm. um, if the government really wants to engage on the topic of 2030, I ask them to get Treasury, the Department, Productivity Commission, to do the homework that should have been done in the first place. Because okay. here's one thing I can guarantee you. The Coalition will not do what Labor has done, and that is pluck a target out of the air with mm. complete disregard for how it's going to be achieved, how much it's going to cost and who's going to pay. We won't play that. OK, and that's fine to talk about Labor's role in that and economics, but it's still an international agreement, so the question goes to what you would do. It sounds as though perhaps you'll say we're still in for net zero by 2050, but not necessarily 43% by 2030. Is that a position you're considering? Oh, look, I'll, I'll, I'll allow you and very experienced um, commentators, Tom, to, mm. to muse about possibilities, but... But um, if you were all in for 2030, you'd say so. Clearly, you're weighing up whether to commit to the 2030 goal by saying, we'll see, essentially. Well, to be honest, Tom, I'm, I'm not sort of sitting here sort of weighing things up. I'm proactively on the front foot saying mm. to the Albanese government, you set a target. You are changing Australian industry. Companies are closing because of the targets you set. You still cannot answer the question, how mm. are you going to reach those targets? And that's how fair enough on Labor, but the question is pays? also for you as an opposition, because it's, a, it's an international agreement. So no, I, you are, I, I, you are I weighing that, up from the sound I, of it I, whether Tom, to stick to 43%. That. Is, that, is that a I, fair comment? I do get what you're saying. My point is this. As an opposition, do you truly believe it is responsible to try to talk about, uh, you know, plucking a target out of the air or agreeing with the, the government's existing target. We did not vote for their target. Why? They haven't answered okay. those fundamental questions. So they still need to answer those questions. We are okay. not on the eve of an election. They haven't even had two years yet in office. It's not too late. The government should come out and tell the Australian people the targets to which they've signed up, okay. how they're going to achieve them, how much is it going to cost and who's going to pay. That should be the starting point before there's any uh, consideration elsewhere. Got to leave it there. Ted O'Brien, appreciate your time today. Thank Likewise, you. Likewise, Tom. Thank you very much.